Hello, my name is Rachel Milner, and I'm so glad you're here today. Um, I am the creative director for a company called Well Watered Women. I get to do graphic design and create products like Bible studies and journals and different things for women to use in their everyday life as they get to know the Lord. And today we're going to talk about creative journaling. Um, you may not consider yourself very creative or a journaler, and that's okay. Um, today we're going to talk about what that looks like to really illustrate your faith. How can you take a practice like journaling and a practice like art and put them together? Um, I started doing this a few years ago when I was going through a time um, of feeling pretty anxious. I had found out that my dad was going to have a big surgery and it was making me very nervous. Um, and so a friend of mine came over and she had brought um, watercolors and paints and different sorts of um, stickers and stencils and all sorts of things. And she put it out on the table and she invited me to just sit with her and watercolor. I had never really done that before. Um, but I, all of a sudden that day had gone from being so worried and anxious and really Really dreading what could possibly happen with my dad's surgery to spending an hour or more just sitting there with the watercolors thinking about a Bible verse we put on worship music and I was able to turn that into a time of worship um, this friend the same friend had been a mentor of mine in high school and she had always had a really interesting way of combining faith and art faith and creativity that was something that I had always admired about her she could take um, art and she could put things to life that maybe she couldn't just say with words. She could invite people into her own life for us to see ways to create and to honor the Lord with that. She would illustrate things on note cards and write a letter with a Bible verse and give it to you as a form of encouragement. Or she would paint a beautiful canvas and give it to you as a gift. These things hung up on the walls of our church. She used graphic design to do logos and t-shirts and things for events. And I found that so fascinating. I loved that idea of combining faith and, and creativity in some way. And so it was really neat that this same friend was sort of introducing me um, to a new way of illustrating my faith and turning my worry into worship. And so that really started a process of Bible journaling and um, taking this process of picking a Bible verse, focusing on it, and illustrating it in some way. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. Um, if you are, if you've ever journaled before, you've probably just grabbed a journal and a pen and written out some thoughts or words or prayers. Um, and that is a wonderful practice. A lot of times that can help us put things um, on paper, jot thoughts down that we couldn't quite say by just sitting down and, and talking out loud. Um, but when we start to create and add elements like painting or drawing or watercolors or any of those other art forms with it, I have found a lot of times that I can kind of get to the root of what I'm feeling or experiencing in a different way than just words. Um, I, a lot of times I'm drawn to a specific color or a certain image that keeps coming to mind as I think about a Bible verse. And it's really interesting to see how that gets translated and how it comes out on paper, um, even if an hour ago I couldn't tell you exactly what I was feeling. So I want to encourage you today to, to kind of forget what you know about journaling um, and think of this as a new opportunity to illustrate your faith, to use journaling as a helpful tool to not only process and think about what you are experiencing, but to worship the Lord and then potentially to even benefit and bless the people around you, whether that's your friends and family or eventually one day your church body um, there are so many different ways that this practice can start with us and be a form of worship and then get translated into a way to really bless other people so one thing that I like to do whenever I'm going to start doing this, if I'm going to spend some time in my Bible or if I want to think about a Bible verse and illustrate it in some way, I just start with prayer. I like to ask the Lord to show me something new in his word for him to give me an image or something that I can really latch on to and really learn more about him as I think about it. Um, and I just ask that this time would be honoring to him. So what I'm going to do now is just say a quick prayer for us and then we'll dive into what you can use and how you can do this. Lord, thank you so much that you are a creative God. Thank you for the way that you allow us to create and to use that as a form of worship. 
Um, I pray today that for anyone who's watching this video, that this time would just be um, an exciting time to learn about a new way to worship, for us to think about how to use creativity, um, how to Bible journal, how to use our illustrated faith as a way to honor you, to learn more about you, and to set our hearts on you. Lord, we pray that this time would be pleasing to you um, and that everything we do, we do would honor you. In your name we pray, amen. So as we um, get ready to start thinking through what are some tools you can use, I just wanted to show you a few examples. Um, this is the Bible that I started using back in 2015 when I was going through that first situation with my dad. Um, I would, a lot of times, I love the Psalms. That's where I would start because the Psalms have a lot of visual language. So if you read a Psalm, it's pretty easy to think about some sort of imagery that goes along with it. Um, there are gonna be times when I will look back here and I can tell you exactly where I was when I did that. For example, this page, I was at the beach. So I have a palm tree and a beautiful sunset and I remember vividly being over, looking over the balcony of my um, hotel room, seeing the water and really focusing on Psalm 92, thinking about how the righteous flourish like the palm tree. I loved that imagery and I thought it was so cool to get to study that while I was surrounded by palm trees. There are gonna be other times that I um, might focus on one element of um, a color or a flower or an image, just something that stands out to me about that verse. Um, this particular one is from Psalm 56, where it says, you've kept count of my tossings and put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? And I love that idea of like he, the Lord knows our heart. He catches our tears. He cares what we feel about. And so I had painted this beautiful um, imagery of a flower and a bottle and this idea that he he, kept, he catches our tears. He, he hears us when we call to him um, and he answers. And I also made a point to date this. I wanted to remember what I was feeling that day when I painted this, when I did this. Um, sometimes I'm gonna read a passage and I'm gonna, rather than have like a strong image, I might have some colors that come to mind. Something that feels bold or brave or something that feels calming and still. Um, and so there are gonna be days when I look through my Bible and there's really just more color and, and text than anything. Um, I started just to do this pretty consistently because this was a really cool way to meditate on scripture. Um, when you think about meditation, that word, a lot of times you might think about um, this idea of sort of emptying your mind. And that is a good step. That is a first step to just sit and to be still. But the point of meditating on the Bible is to fill back up on God's word. So when we do something like this practice where we're gonna illustrate a Bible verse or we're gonna think about faith and really put it into lettering and art and creating, um, we're not just emptying our minds, we're filling it up with good things. And so that is what this practice really became for me. It was how can I study God's word? How can I glean so much more out of it um, than just a quick reading and moving on? And I also learned that by using things like my hands and my brain and physically like going through the motion of writing out a verse multiple times or painting an illustration that goes with it, that actually helps us remember. Um, I don't know if you have ever done this when you're studying for school or you're um, preparing for a big test. If you will get up and walk around, you'll actually remember that information better. Um, there is science behind it that I don't fully understand, but when we start to engage multiple senses, it helps us retain and remember information. And so I found that by doing this, by by illustrating these verses and by focusing on a verse for longer than a few minutes at a time, um, by painting it out and writing it out multiple times, it really did help my mind remember those verses. And so rather than just read my Bible and put it away, weeks later I could still remember exactly what, what I was reading, where I was when I um, did that illustration, what the Lord was teaching me in that moment, and I started to retain it so much better. Um, so it's really become a cool practice for me to to go back and even look at this Bible is one that I don't use a ton anymore. I have a different Bible that I've been working through. Um, but when I go back to it, I like I can remember so vividly what the Lord was teaching me in that time. So I want you to think about that as an opportunity of remembrance. How can you take something that the Lord is teaching you right now, 
illustrate it in such a way that you're gonna remember it when you see it a few years ago. Those images really stick with us. It's why we remember our favorite photographs and movies we've seen and things like that. Um, the power of an image is gonna stick with you really well. And so when we can combine that with scripture, it's a really neat opportunity to hide God's word in our heart. Okay, so before we get started with the what to use, um, I wanna encourage you to pause the video and to do two things. You're gonna pray on your own. You're just gonna ask the Lord to help you use this time to be fruitful and to give you things from his word that stand out. And then I want you to ask a question, what is going on in your life right now that is consuming your thoughts? Is there something you're excited about, something you're worried about, something you're trying to decide on? But whatever it is, what is the thing that is like most consuming to your brain right now? Um, because we're gonna come back to that later. So go ahead and pause and do that now. Okay, so now we're gonna get into some of the tools that I like to use to do this. You don't have to have all these things. Today, if you even just have a Bible or a pen and paper, that's plenty. Um, but I'm gonna show you a few of the things that I like to use so that if this is something that you wanted to get into more, you could know where to start. Uh, my favorite medium is watercolors, and you don't have to have anything fancy. These are a simple, this is a simple watercolor palette that I think I got at Michael's. Um, you can get similar ones at Hobby Lobby or Walmart or anywhere on Amazon um, for literally under $10, but it has just a good variety of colors. Um, they're, they're dried, and I'm gonna add water to it here in a second so you can see how those work. Um, but this is a very easy way to start with a lot of color without having to have like multiple bottles of paint. You could of course use paint or any other sort of medium like that, but the watercolor palette is my favorite. One of the favorite things I found in this process are these little watercolor brushes. Um, so the brush itself, it's, it's like any normal art brush, but it has water in the barrel. Um, and so with watercolor, rather than having to have a cup that you keep dipping in consistently, these you actually squeeze the water out and it comes out on the brush and then you can keep a paper towel, towel nearby so that when it's time to change colors, you can do that easily. Um, but these are gonna be a really fun way to just keep going back to your palette without having to have the cumbersome, like a cup of water and you know changing out multiple brushes brushes and that sort of thing. So these brushes you can get in a three pack on Amazon for less than $10. You can also find them at any craft store. Those have been fun. Um, I love that. I always keep on hand a pencil and a good eraser. Um, this is really, if you're nervous, which first of all, we'll get to that. I don't want you to be nervous. There's no wrong way to do this. Um, but a pencil is a great way to start. You can sketch out what you're gonna draw. You can practice different lettering. You can practice drawing an image. And we'll go over it here in a minute with a different pen. But a pencil is just a great way to start and not have to worry about messing up. And then I always keep an eraser on hand because if I do, like if, for instance with this, if I were going to practice all this lettering in pencil, um, once I go over it with a pen and before I add the watercolor, I'm gonna erase all the pencil away. So I just keep some erasers on hand. These are two of my favorite pens. These are both waterproof pens. So when it comes to using watercolor on top of them, that's gonna help. Um, a Micron pen, this is probably my very favorite. And again, these can come in multi-packs or you can get um, a different point. This is 0 0.05, so it's kind of a thin to medium point. Um, but I love these pens because when I go over, if I, you know, if this, all of this is done with a Micron pen. And when I go over it, um, I'm gonna erase it and it's not gonna smear. And then when I add watercolor to it, it's not gonna smear. So Micron is a great option or a Faber-Castell. Both of these come in multi, um, multiple different thicknesses and varieties, and they're great for different types of lettering. You can, we'll get into that lettering a little bit later, but you can um, practice with different thicknesses, different sizes. This is an extra small, so it's a pretty fine point. You can go all the way up to bold. They have brush pens, different things, but both of these brands are gonna be good for not bleeding if you add any sort of wet medium on top. Really, that would be plenty to start. If I have my Bible, um, I have some good watercolor paper. So this is a simple book. Um, pretty sure it's also from Hobby Lobby. This is just a good, thick watercolor paper. Um, so it's gonna specifically say watercolor. That means it can handle the mixed media. It's not gonna get destroyed if I add water to it. Um, and this is just gonna give us a good canvas to work off of if you're not quite ready to commit to illustrating in your Bible. 
So if you start with paper, a Bible, and some sort of medium, that's really all you need. But you can always add extra things for fun. This is where it can get more like scrapbooking almost, if you're gonna start adding um, different textures and pieces of uh, different elements into your art. So you can have things like stickers. Um, this is great if you're nervous about lettering and you don't really know how to letter or you're, you're still learning. Um, stickers are a great element to just practice putting those in your Bible or into your, um, your illustration. If you um, really don't, if you don't even have stickers, you don't wanna deal with like spelling out each, each letter, um, you can do things like look through magazines and pull out pieces of paper from a magazine and put words in that way. Um, you can get creative. This is where it starts to be fun and you can really make it your own. Um, you can use things like stencils. This is a great way if you don't um, don't really trust yourself yet to draw flowers, but you want some sort of element like that, a stencil is gonna be a really fun way to do that. This is gonna go on a little cleaner with something like a marker or a paint, but you, can, you definitely can do it with watercolor. Um, but stencils are a fun addition. They're gonna add some nice pattern. You can use things like stamps. These you can find even in the dollar section at Target, um, but you can get stamps of all different sorts from any sort of craft store and then just keep an ink pad nearby. Um, and then one thing that I have loved to do is to date. Anytime I was going through a different passage or something in my Bible, I love to put the date down. And that way, as I go back and look at it, I can remember exactly where I was when I was learning that particular lesson. And so I got one of these little, um, it reminds me of a library stamper where they used to stamp library cards and you can set the year, the date, um, the month, and the day of the, of the month. So I think I found this at Hobby Lobby. It's a fun little addition, but you can always just write your date in with your by yourself then I usually keep something like a glue stick nearby that way if I were going to um, pull out different papers or anything like that that I add into my art they, I have that easy ready to add you can grab scrapbook paper anything like that at a fun craft store um, really the sky is the limit there's here's an example of I loved this little card and I just added it in with some washi tape um, so this is where it can kind of get even more custom as you as you go as you get used to it Okay, so now let's say you've gathered all your supplies, you're ready to go, and you're like, great, where do I start? How do I start? What do I do? I have six steps that you can follow. You can do this every single time you get ready to illustrate your faith. You can do um, just a few parts of these or all of it, but these are some really helpful ways to get going and to get a really good feel for how to jump into the, the Bible and really illustrate those verses that stand out to you. Okay, your first step is pretty straightforward. Spend time with the Lord. This could be reading your Bible, reading a short devotional, really just praying, um, asking him to sort of show you a verse that's been coming to mind lately or um, help you think about an attribute of him that is gonna be standing out to you over and over again. Um, but I wanna just encourage you to start there. That's a great way to start, to just open your Bible and spend time with him. You can put on some worship music, have a fun playlist, and then really let him speak to you first before you just jump in. The second is to pray about what you just read. What, what is standing out from those verses? Maybe you read a chapter of the Old Testament and you're, you wanna pick one verse to really illustrate and focus on, so pray about it. Ask the Lord to bring different images to mind. Ask him to give you something to latch onto and to really remember. So now that you spend time with him and then spend time in prayer, um, now it's time to sort of get going on an idea. How can I bring this to life? How can I illustrate this thing that I just read that I spent time on? Um, and so I'm gonna start with just writing it down. I'm gonna have my pencil and maybe my paper um, and just sort of jot down the things that come to mind. So I'll give you an example. One verse I love is from Psalm 46:10, which says to be still and know that I am the Lord. So when I start to think about that verse, if I were gonna sit and really meditate on it, the idea of being still sounds simple enough, um, but that really kind of takes some work, right? We have to calm our mind, we have to put away distractions, put away our phone, put away social media, put away all the things that steal our attention regularly. I have to sit still, I have to literally put everything out of my mind and focus which is really hard to do. If I asked you to stop and sit perfectly still for a minute right now, you'd probably find that's a little harder than you think. Um, but to be still, that's the first part. 
but there's more to it. I have to also know that he is the Lord. So that makes me think about knowledge. It makes me think about focus. It makes me think about um, dwelling on who God is. He is the Lord. He is over the situation. He is bigger than me. He is powerful. And all of a sudden now, that simple phrase of eight or nine words has started to conjure up these different images. Um, when I think about being still, that makes me think about peace. That makes me think about calm, um, being able to just rest, to not have to worry or be striving, but to just sit still and be at peace. Um, when I think about knowledge, I think about learning and books and his word and all the different ways that we come to know the Lord more intimately. So I would start by just jotting those things down. And this is where a, a little more traditional journaling is going to come in. Maybe you have a journal that you keep with you and you jot those things down. You think about water, you think about color. Um, the color blue comes to mind when I think about peace. So I'm going to jot those things down and that's going to be a good starting point for me. Um, so now I could really take that verse to be still and know, and now it's time to start drawing. That's our fourth step. Um, pick whatever medium you've chosen, whether it's colored pencils or markers or paint of some sort, and this is where the sky's the limit. You get to just start going and have fun. What, what comes to mind? Maybe with I, if I follow my ideas on that verse, I might draw um, some water. I might draw the, the words be still really big. Um, and that's gonna be like the primary focus of my illustration. Maybe I'm drawn to things like this where there's blues and pinks and some um, purples and some sort of peaceful colors that are gonna remind me of um, a still lake, uh, some sort of body of water that just feels really peaceful. Um, so there's truly no wrong way to do it. You can start um, following that idea and just ask the Lord to keep showing you as you go. Maybe you're drawn to a certain color and you just keep going and all of a sudden you have a full blue piece of paper. <laughs> um, maybe you really focus on a certain word or an attribute of who God is and that's the thing that you want to know um, from that verse. You want to be still and know that he is powerful, that he is faithful, that he is kind. Um, so a lot of times the, I start with a verse and then it might lead to another train of thought. Maybe it helps me think about something that I've been learning lately. Maybe it helps you think about something that you need to remember that you can't seem to keep in front of you and you want to put it on a piece of paper so you can put it up in your room. Um, there's, there's really no wrong way to do it, but I want to encourage you to just start somewhere. Don't be nervous. Just get that paper out and start going. If you're nervous about what sort of lettering to use or how to make it look pretty, um, I would encourage you not to worry about that at the beginning. Let that be something you practice later. Uh, but you can start with your everyday handwriting. You can start by looking at a magazine and finding some lettering that you think looks cool and just trying to imitate it. You can look up different fonts on the internet. There are so many different ways that you can practice incorporating different creative outlets in, in this, in lettering, um, but there's no wrong or right way to do it. So the point is you're taking time, you're thinking about those words, you're writing them down, and you're using that, that process to really flex that muscle and practice creating. Um, the last step after you have done all of those steps, you've, you've picked your scripture, you've taken the time to draw it, you've come up with your illustration, I would encourage you to put a date on it. Even if, if you don't want to put it on the front where the illustration is, just turn it over and put it on the back or put it small up in the column of your Bible. Um, but when you can go back and look and see a specific date, that's going to help you remember and put a context to what you were learning and to what the Lord was showing you at that time. So date is a date is a really easy way to just mark a memory and to be able to flip back and look and see how God showed up for you. The last step that I'll give you is pretty simple, but it's forget the rules. There are no rules. There's no right or wrong. There's no um, particular order or method you have to do it in. Um, the point is just that you're out there, you're exercising that practice. You're going to take time to really focus and study God's word as you go and as you illustrate. Um, so what we're going to do next is press pause on the video and I want you to pick a Bible verse and See what happens. See if you can um, spend some time thinking about that verse, think about what it means, and then I want you to practice in any way you want illustrating that verse in any way, any style that you want with any sort of medium and see what comes of it. All right, don't stop illustrating. You can just keep going, but I'm gonna join you and just show you what I would do if I were um, just opening up my Bible to do this today. So I turn to Psalm 37 
Um, this is probably a verse you've heard before, and it's one that I really love. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Um, the verse, that chapter goes on to talk about committing our way to the Lord, to trust in him, but there's a lot of really beautiful imagery in here that I love. Um, but I'm going to focus in on verses three and four. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So we've probably heard that verse many times, but I, I'm going to think about what does it mean to delight myself in the Lord? Well, to delight is to think about the things that um, are good and that we enjoy and that we really take delight in. What are the things that really um, bring a smile to our face that give us joy and excitement and passion to think about the things of God? Um, when we delight ourselves in the Lord as opposed to just the things of this world, then anything that we delight in is going to line up with what we know to be true of God. Who is he? He's a good, holy, pure God. What are the things that delight him? Well, we know from scripture that is when we love him and love others. Um, I think about delight as um, something that is beautiful. That's what I delight in. I, I love beautiful things. I love um, to go outside and see a sunset or to see a beautiful flower on the side of the road or a vase of flowers in my house. Um, these are things that I know delight the Lord because he created them. He creates the sunset every day. He created the flowers in the beginning and he still does today. Um, so I know those, those types of images come to mind when I think about delighting in the Lord. And then we talk about he gives us the desires of our heart once we have delighted ourselves in him. Um, and so obviously that talks about a heart. That's a pretty easy image. Um, and then we're gonna think about what does it mean um, that verse before to dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. That again kind of brings this image of the land outside, nature. I start to think about um, the beautiful colors of nature and the way that God is creative and the way that those things that he creates every day give us joy. Um, so for me, that's pretty much flowers and a sunset. <laughs> those are the things that I would say are some of my greatest delights. Um, so I'm gonna start, like I said, with my pencil. I'm gonna just sort of sketch what I would do here. Um, so I want to write, delight yourself in the Lord. He will give you the desires of your heart. I'm going to focus on the word delight. Now remember, we are not trying to make a masterpiece. We are just trying to worship the Lord. Um, so there is no right or wrong way. You could take this and draw a completely different drawing. I'm going to add some simple flowers here. And then I'm going to add some colors that you would find in a sunset in nature. These are the things that I delight in and that the Lord delights in. Beautiful things that he has created. For you, that may be something totally different. So, I'm gonna draw my flowers. Get a basic idea. Delight yourself. I'm gonna write. See, I didn't space this well. That's why we did pencil first, because I can always adjust. Delight yourself in the... All right, so one trick that I like to do that's pretty easy for, um, for cursive lettering to make it look a little more intentional without having to really do any sort of fancy calligraphy is making our letters, taking our basic shape of cursive. So I just, I'm gonna go over my pencil. So I've got my basic outline of the word delight. Now a really easy way to make this look a little better than just the basic shape of the word is to make the down strokes thicker. So anytime that my pen went down, I'm just gonna thicken that up. So down here, I went down. So you think about how I drew it, I went there. Now when I come down here, we're gonna make that thicker. Make this L thicker. I, anytime your pen went down, we're just adding a little, adding a little bit to it. This is gonna make it look nice and intentional. You can put 
fast forward on some of that. All right, delight. And then I always like to combine like a cursive font like this with a pretty straightforward, like all caps font, like what I'm doing now. So this is pretty simple. This is just like my normal handwriting. Um, but I just like how those combine where you have your cursive with like a pretty straightforward font uh, text, like a all caps or your everyday handwriting. Um, so we're gonna write in the and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did for Delight, I'm gonna do for Lord. So making this initial shapes cursive, and then we're gonna go back and thicken it up. So anywhere I went down, making thicker. Now you can do um, your watercolor first and then go back and do your lettering but I found that the pen actually takes better to the paper before the watercolor or paint is on there. You can always go over it and touch up, but I usually start with my lettering first, um, and then I might go in after I erase my pencil marks, I might go in and touch up as needed, but I'm gonna do pen before I add my watercolor. So here, um, I sort of, because I didn't do perfect spacing, which is fine, um, this flower is gonna be sort of tucked in behind the word Lord, which I kinda like. It's gonna make it feel like they're a little more connected. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do kind of a simple outline here, as opposed to drawing the whole thing. Um, and then once I add some color, I might wanna add a little more pin to it, and that's fine, um, but this is gonna be my chance to just get a basic outline of each flower. I like it kind of loose, so it feels just like more of an outline than a, um, a full shape. So these are my simple stems and petals. Does not have to be perfect, but I love this. I think about delight yourself in the Lord. How do I do that? Like we talked about with flowers, with sunset, those beautiful things. So I used my Micron pen for that. And this was the 0 0.05 thickness. It's a great little outline, as you saw. I could have gone a little thicker for this part, but I think that'll work. Um, and then now I'm gonna take my eraser. I'm gonna give it just a second so the ink dries fully. I wanna make sure it doesn't blur um, I'm, or smudge when I erase, but this is um, doesn't take very long. Once I get it kind of dry to the touch, it's probably fine. So I'll go ahead, erase my pencil marks. And again, this is good to do before you add the paint. Um, the paint would cover a lot of it, but I just always like to have a cleaner line than the pencil marks still. So we're gonna erase that, good to go. Now we're gonna use these brushes I talked about earlier. So I have a few that are different thicknesses. Um, this one is a good bit thinner, so I'm gonna start with it. Um, just to sort of get my basic color in and then for like my background I'll probably use this thicker one because it'll go a little bit quicker So I'm gonna take my paper towel squeeze some water out Just make sure I get the the brush good and wet and then one of my favorite colors is orange So I'm always drawn to this pretty orange color, which you can tell there's like an indention from all the times that I've used it um, But I'm gonna start with that and I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna add Kind of stay within the lines but if i get out of it that's fine um, the point again is not to be perfect it's just to illustrate this idea so i'm gonna add my color see i'm not out, i'm out of the lines that's fine it is okay we're adding some good color and then when i get up here to my lettering um i'll probably just sort of fill in i might fill in a little bit around there but i'm gonna kind of keep the lettering um leave that for a little bit later. So I'm just gonna go kind of around it this way. Now to clean this, like if I wanna go to a new color, I'm just gonna squeeze some water out, clean off my brush um, on my paper towel. This is good to keep on hand. And then I like this pretty orangey, or uh, yellowy color to mix with the orange. I think that'd be pretty. Um, so we're gonna add in some yellow. This will be good if I do a blue sky behind it, this will pop really well. So add in yellow and then maybe a little bit of this sort of pinker, darker pink color. 
So um, you can play around with watercolors and the more water you add, obviously the runnier your paint is gonna get. Um, so like for instance, this is almost like puddling. It's kind of a lot. So I would probably just dab my paper towel on it, take a little bit of that color off, and then I can always go back and add some more. If you go really heavy, it's gonna bleed through a good bit, especially with a page like a Bible page because it is so thin. If I was doing this just on a normal um, watercolor paper, I'd go a little heavier. But for here, I'm gonna go a little thinner. I can always add more later. Um, but got my basic flower colors. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of green. I have a green here that I really love. Again, it's um, it's been used quite a bit, so it's got a little indention and I love that color. I'm gonna fill in my leaves here and I might do like a thin little line of green for my stems and then clean it off again. Get a different, a little bit darker shade of orange for the center here. And I'll tie that in here too. So see, just then, the because this um, flower was still a little wet, when I put that color in, it bled. That's fine. If you don't like that, you could always dab it off and try again. But if it bleeds a little, I think it's fine. It kind of adds some nice color. Um, so I've got my simple flowers. Now I'm gonna take my bigger brush and um, I'm gonna go for the, think about like the, the blue of a sky. Since this is sort of sunset colors, I'm gonna go with a more um, blue to sort of contrast for this background and just sort of start filling in. I would, um, you can go over this, like, like I said before, it's not gonna hurt it, but it is gonna um, make it a little bit duller where I might wanna go back in and sort of go over these letters after I've colored over them. But I'm gonna um, bring in some of this pretty periwinkle blue color, and then I might um, go a little more blue down here and just sort of have fun, bring it all in. Let it think of the sky and the flowers. If you want to be, if you like don't want this to bleed at all, you can wait and just make sure each color is pretty dry before you get up close to it. Um, but that is one thing that happens with watercolors is just because water is involved, if the, if the colors touch while they aren't completely dry, they are gonna bleed a little bit over. And I think that is okay, but if that bothers you, you can just wait until they're fully dry and then come in and add your blue or you know whatever your background color is. Um, but here, we're just gonna fill in. Think about the sky being all around. There we go. Now you could go all the way up on this page, that'd be fine, but um, I might leave that blank so that if I wanna do a different part of a verse up there, I can. So this is such a simple illustration, but for me, it's very um, very telling of what I think about. When I delight myself in the Lord, I think about the beautiful things that he's created, and um, the way that nature shows us more of him. And so I like that idea of um, just going outside, looking at the sky, looking at the flowers, and letting that remind me to delight myself in the Lord and to know that when I do that, he delights to give us the desires of our heart. So once this is fully dry, I'm gonna, you can tell this little, these spots aren't totally dry, but um, I would probably go back over and just thicken this lettering up a little bit. You can tell that the paint sort of dried over the text and that's um, kind of making it a little more dull, which is fine if you like that style. So I hope this was a fun practice for you to get to think about how can I illustrate my faith? How can I take a Bible verse and bring it to life, give it color, um, and really put it with an image that I'm going to hold on to and remember? Um, sometimes I will say I'll read through my text and not necessarily have anything that stands out to me right away or might feel a little bit stuck. And that's where I have a list of seven journal prompts that I keep taped in my Bible. Uh, I'm gonna put them up on a slide here for you and I'd love for you to write these down. These are just some simple questions to get your mind thinking. You don't have to answer all seven, you can just pick one, um, but this is a great way to think about what am I feeling right now and how can I turn those feelings into worship and honor the Lord with them. So. I hope this has been a helpful practice. I hope that you get to apply this and think about how you can use this in a way to bless the people around you, to serve your church body through art and the gift of art, um, and to really just use this as a form of worship in your everyday life.